In the case of Mani's work, he was interested in uh, the uh, consequence of creating uh, an EMT. Uh, as the title implies, the obvious target of the EMT is a mesenchymal cell, but for reasons that I don't have time to enter into now, he speculated that the product of the EMT uh, was actually a stem cell, a speculation that earned him the derision of his lab mates, since it seemed just too sexy and convenient that, that uh, stem cells, which everybody else was working on, also impinged on his own work. Still, he forged ahead. Uh, I, I never hearing about this till months later. Uh, and here, uh, I just um, refer us to uh, the general conceptual scheme that is widely embraced vis-a-vis uh, -vis stem cells. In normal uh, epithelial tissues, one imagines as a self-renewing stem cell, uh, transit amplifying cells, post-mitotic differentiated cells, and that the um, bulk of the mitotic activity in the tissue involves these transit amplifying or progenitor cells. And this scheme has been appropriated by those who are interested in the organization of uh, solid tumors, uh, such as breast cancers, as Michael Clark and Muhammad Al-Hajj first showed. In this case, uh, the self-renewing stem cell is a cancer stem cell which has the ability to seed a new tumor when it's uh, transplanted into an appropriate host. The great majority of the cells in the tumor, although they may be genetically identical with a cancer stem cell, have, because of changes in their transcriptional program, given up the ability or the opportunity of seeding a new tumor, uh, even though they may constitute the bulk of the tumor mass. And this, this scheme also holds implications to the extent it can be verified in, in the whole uh, problem of metastasis. Because this cell, if it successfully disseminates from a primary tumor, is qualified to create a metastasis because of its self-renewal potential the great majority of cells in the primary tumor, however, according to this scheme, even though they may successfully disseminate, are not qualified to seed metastases because they have given up the option of, um, of self-renewal. Um, in, in the case of uh, Amani and, and Wenjun Guo, who worked on this, uh, they used the CD24 and 44 markers that had first been uh, illuminated by the work of, of Michael Clark. And here, just by way of orientation, I'll show you that the facts analyses they used demonstrated that according to the, the previous work, the position of CD24 high, 44 low, represents the position of non-stem cells in this facts analysis. Up here is a position of putative stem cells, 44 high, 24 low, a con converse uh, cell surface markers. Of some interest here is the fact that these cells were propagated in cell culture, and to the extent that these are bona fide stem cells, this begins to suggest that one can actually maintain stem cells in tissue culture rather than just in the specialized microenvironment of a stem cell niche, as is widely believed. In the case of, uh, of Mani and Guo's work, uh, when they force cells through an EMT through long-term culture with TGF-beta, which is a rather ineffective way of doing so, the cells underwent a morphological transformation from an epithelial to mesenchymal uh, phenotype, but more importantly, they migrated en masse from the non-stem cell position up to the stem cell position. And this could be recapitulated by ectopically expressing in these immortalized human memory epithelial cells uh, either the snail or the twist EMT-inducing transcription factor. In both cases, they, one observed an en masse, oh, we have to stop. Uh, uh, in both cases, he observed a, uh, an en masse uh, migration from a non-stem cell to a stem cell position. Um, and this began to suggest, once again, with morphological transformation of cells, that, uh, that the cells move from the non-stem cell to the stem cell position under the actions of these two EMT-inducing transcription factors. In the end, however, a more persuasive um, demonstration came from looking at the, at the naturally resident majority population of non-stem cells and stem cells, comparing the relative levels of expressions of various messenger RNAs in these two kinds of tumors. And in the putative stem cells, one found one two hundredth as much of the epithelial marker E. cadherin. Conversely, the putative stem cells expressed between 40 and 100 fold more of fibronectin, vimentin, and N. cadherin, all mesenchymal markers, and comparable overexpression between 30 and, and 120 fold of four EMT inducing transcription factors FOX, C2, CYP1, TWIST, and SNAIL slug in this case was not significantly overexpressed. Still, here is a naturally existing affiliation between the expression, the endogenous expression of an EMT-inducing transcription factor and residence in the stem cell state. And so one gained confidence that there really is a, an intrinsic natural affiliation between uh, stem cellness and the uh, actions of these EMT-inducing transcription factors. This could also be extended to, for example, looking at normal human memory epithelial cells from reduction in mammoplasties. 
in this case, a relative 150-fold overexpression of the CYP1 EMT-inducing transcription factor. And uh, reassuring was the observation that the putative stem cells looked mesenchymal in monolayer culture, and they could form mammospheres in three-dimensional culture. These mammospheres are known to contain mammary epithelial stem cells from the work of a number of laboratories. Conversely, the non-stem cells look, uh, have a cobblestone phenotype in monolayer. They fail to um, form mammospheres with any efficiency, as you can see from these two uh, bar graphs. Uh, induction of uh, either snail or twist has a profound effect, as well as long-term exposure of TGF-beta, in increasing the number of mammospheres in 3D culture. I portray this mammosphere assay as a, a surrogate assay for stem celladness in vivo, as it is widely used in the mammary field. In the work of our um, uh, collaborator, uh, Nelly Polyak of the Dana-Farber, she looked at both human uh, carcin breast carcinomas as well as no normal human mammary epithelial cells and discovered, as you can see here from this heat map, a preferential association of uh, mesenchymal markers with the CD44 high 24 low uh, stem cell fraction. And I mention this if, uh, if for no other reason to demonstrate the fact that the more we look, the more we see that there are very strong parallels between the stem cell program of normal mammary epithelial cells and the stem cell program of breast cancer cells. It is not as if the breast cancers invent an entirely new stem cell program. Instead, they seem to uh, appropriate it almost entirely from the pre-existing normal mammary epithelium and to exploit it for their own internal organization. Taking all this together, this uh, persuades one that the EMT program uh, is actually dangerous for two reasons in terms of clinical tumor progression. First, it empowers cancer cells to physically disseminate, and secondly, it enables these um, disseminating cells to be self-renewing, which I argued before, without showing it to you, that this was a prerequisite to successful metastasis formation, and that in the absence of self-renewal potential, a disseminated cancer cell would have a very hard time, if not an impossibility, of forming a, a macroscopic metastasis. Uh, in the end, however, we wished uh, to prove, uh, to prevent, uh, to create more persuasive biological proofs that there is really an intimate connection between the epithelial mesenchymal transition and the stem cell state. And here I refer to the work of Wen Jun Guo. We're switching now from the human to the mouse mammary system, and here the facts analyses look different. Here are the stem cells, as he showed, and the non-stem cells, the work of John Stingle and Jane Visvater being very influential here. And here one also makes use of uh, cleared mammary stromal fat pads. The fact is, as he showed here, if one takes these putative stem cells and implants them in a cleared mammary stromal fat pad of a mouse, after six to eight weeks, these putative stem cells, which look mesenchymal in monolayer culture, generate entire mammary ductal trees, which are intact, save for a connection to the nipple. Conversely, the putative non-stem cells fail to form such a mammary um, uh, epithelial ductal tree upon implantation into the mammary stromal fat pad. And of course, as you would imagine, because they're uh, non-stem cells, they form an epithelial cobblestone-like monolayer. Um, moreover, uh, Wen Jun Go found when st studying using RT-PCR the expression of a series of different uh, transcription factors that, for example, the slug transcription factor, which I alluded to, to before, is expressed 36-fold uh, more highly in the putative stem cells rather than the non-stem cells. And upon uh, doing immunofluorescence, he found that slug is indeed expressed along uh, these abluminal cells which uh, are the putative locations of mammary epithelial stem cells, in this case, in the mouse mammary gland, this being a cross-section of a mouse um, mammary duct. And so he undertook to examine the question of whether he could impart to mammary epithelial cells an increased uh, stem celladness using this mammary gland implantation assay. Indeed, if he could impart to cells uh, an ability to reintegrate into the mammary stromal fat pad and to regenerate an entire mammary gland, this should, by all rights, be a very convincing uh, demonstration that the implanted cells had acquired a stem cell function. And so he took two populations of mammary epithelial cells, in one in, in which he induced uh, the expression of, of um, the slug transcription factor reversibly for one week prior to implantation into the cleared mammary stromal fat pad, Another population of control cells, uh, one was, was labeled with uh, RFP, the other with, um, with GFP, uh, was not so induced. He mixed these two in equal numbers together, and then he uh, asked them to undertake a horse race to see which ones of these populations of cells would be more successful in engrafting and generating the, uh, the, the mammary ductal tree. Keeping in mind that the exposure to slug occurred prior to introduction into the um, mammary stromal fat pad. That is, it occurred ex vivo. 
After one day, the two kinds of cells, red and green, uh, looked yellow, and they were indicating they were present in roughly uh, uh, equal amounts one day after implantation. After a week, there began to be a slight uh, prevalence of the cells that have been exposed ex vivo to slug, and after uh, six or seven weeks, now the cells that have been exposed ex vivo form these uh, ductal trees, whereas the cells that had not been showed minimal uh, ductal tree generation. This orange here being testimonial to the fact that even normal mammary epithelial cells have a small number of uh, stem cells within them. Nonetheless, data like this persuade us that there indeed is much to be said. Indeed, we are convinced that forcing cells through an EMT uh, in vitro has, shows a greatly increased rate of um, stem cell uh, formation. Uh, he could demonstrate this as well with a mammosphere assay through the ectopic but reversible expression of slug prior to inception of the assay. And equally interestingly, if you took mammary epithelial cells, normal populations of mammary epithelial cells, and deprived them of slug expression prior to putting them into three-dimensional culture, then this resulted in their loss, essentially their entire loss of uh, stem cell of activity. And so we speak with increasing conviction that there is indeed an intimate connection between passage through an EMT and the acquisition of stem cell in this. Whether this is the only way by which uh, cells, epithelial cells in the mammary gland and potentially elsewhere can acquire stem cell function is something th that we still don't know.